Welcome to Creative Biolabs. The advent of vaccines has introduced new opportunities to prevent and treat infectious diseases. The earliest vaccine can be traced back to 1796 when Edward Jenner found that the cowpox vaccine protects against smallpox infection. As the vaccine developed, it was later introduced to treat more diseases, such as cancers. Cancer vaccines are designed to stimulate anti-tumor immunity through active immunization with tumor antigens and have long been envisioned as a key tool of effective cancer immunotherapy. Research on cancer vaccines has made tremendous progress in the past decades, with numerous studies entering the clinical evaluation. In this presentation, we will go through the following topics. The first chapter is an introduction to the history and formulations of cancer vaccines and a brief introduction to several types of tumor antigens. The second chapter introduces the mechanisms of action of cancer vaccines. The third chapter is about cancer vaccines in clinic development and approved vaccines for cancer prevention and therapy. The last shares information on Creative Biolabs cancer vaccine development solutions. The concept that tumors express specific antigens that could render them naturally immunogenic with the provision of adequate immunostimulation was supported by the pioneering work of William Coley in the 1890s. Repeated injections of erysipelas led to tumor regression in a patient with advanced sarcoma. This early work shows the potential for exogenously administered components to stimulate the immune response to achieve clinically evident tumor regression. Initial cancer vaccines were developed from autologous tumor cells in the 1980s. One example is an autologous tumor cell Mycobacterium bovis bacillus calmet Guerin vaccine for patients with colorectal cancer which showed modest clinical benefit in a small cohort of patients. In the early 1990s, MAGE-1 was identified as the first human cancer antigen. Human tumor antigens were also discovered through mass spectrometry-based or biochemical approaches. In parallel with antigen discovery, there have been numerous efforts to break immune tolerance to tumor antigens and improve antigen delivery. The discovery of dendritic cells in 1973 and the recognition of their potent antigen-presenting capacities led to intense efforts towards dendritic cell vaccination. Predicted immunogenic viral determinants in human papillomavirus-driven carcinomas also showed clinical benefit for patients with vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia. In 2010, the autologous dendritic cell-based prostate cancer vaccine Cipusil-T became the first human therapeutic cancer vaccine to be approved by the US FDA. Multiple clinical studies of vaccines targeting tumor-associated antigens have been carried out. Polyvalent neoantigen-based vaccines have shown anti-tumor activity preclinically and have been tested in early human clinical trials. The choice of antigen to target in any cancer vaccine is extremely important to the efficacy of the vaccine in the clinic. The ideal antigen should be specifically expressed on cancer cells with no expression on normal cells. Ideally the antigen should be necessary for cell survival and be highly immunogenic. Tumor antigens fall into two broad categories, the tumor-associated antigens and tumor-specific antigens. Within each category a number of different types of tumor antigens have been described and are summarized in the table, including cancer germline antigens, differentiation antigens, oncogenic viral antigens, and tumor-specific mutated antigens. Cancer vaccines can be classified into four groups based on the biologic formulation or antigen source, including nucleic acids, peptides, recombinant proteins, microbial vectors, whole tumor cells either autologous or allogeneic, manipulated antigen-presenting cells, and other artificial systems. Among them, peptide or protein-based vaccines, nucleic acid-based vaccines, and microbial vector-based vaccines are quite the same with those of vaccines for infectious diseases. Each of these formulations has their unique advantages and disadvantages. For instance, the use of peptides compared with whole cell lysates or proteins has an advantage that only the epitopes of interest can be delivered to the immune system instead of overloading immunologic pathways with irrelevant antigens that might compete with the relevant epitopes or might induce autoimmune responses. 
To understand the mechanism of cancer vaccines, we should firstly learn the tumor immune cycle. The immune response that effectively kills tumor cells involves steps that allow repetition and expansion called the tumor immune cycle. After the administration of the tumor vaccine, dendritic cells uptake and process tumor antigens, then present them to the major histocompatibility complexes, also known as HLA. Antigen-loaded dendritic cells migrate to lymph nodes to recruit and activate B cells and T cells. Activated B cells and T cells killing tumor cells directly or inducing tumor cell apoptosis. Immunogenic dead tumor cells can release tumor-associated antigens and danger-signaling molecules to increase the depth and breadth of the response in subsequent cycles. After the administration of the tumor vaccine, dendritic cells uptake and process tumor antigens, then present them to the cell surface of MHC1 and MHC2 molecules through cross-presentation. Antigen-loaded dendritic cells migrate to lymph nodes to recruit and activate immune cells. Interaction between MHC peptide complex T cell receptor and cognate receptor ligand pairs activates T cells. Then, activated CD8 T cells proliferate and differentiate into memory T cells and effector T cells. After that, effector T cells travel to tumor microenvironment, killing tumor cells directly or inducing tumor cell apoptosis. Activated CD4 T cells induce B cells to differentiate into memory B cells and plasma cells that produce antibodies. Antibodies recognize the tumor antigen, inducing FC-mediated effector functions, such as antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity and phagocytosis, to kill the tumor cell. Immune resistance or tumor immune escape is a barrier in vaccine therapy, which results in resistance to cancer vaccines. Tumor immune escape can be divided into intrinsic mechanisms determined by the characteristics of tumor cells and external mechanisms involving tumor matrix components. These two mechanisms determine the efficiency of cancer vaccines. For tumor external resistance, immunosuppressive cells, such as cancer-associated fibroblasts, myeloid-derived suppressor cells, regulatory T-cell-S, and M2 macrophages, and immunosuppressive cytokines can inhibit the activation of effector T cells and dendritic cell mediated T cells directly or indirectly in tumor microenvironment. For tumor intrinsic resistance, the intrinsic resistance of tumor contains six aspects the mutations in signaling pathways supporting tumor immune control, the loss of tumor antigen expression, the changes in antigen processing pathways, the loss of HLA expression, epigenetic changes and increased expression of immunosuppressive ligands. Several strategies have been developed to solve tumor escape and tumor microenvironment immunosuppression, including improving immunotherapy delivery platforms and improving antigen selection and combination therapy. Radiotherapy, chemotherapeutic agents, and immunomodulatory molecules may work synergistically with cancer vaccines. As we know, Cancer is characterized by an accumulation of genetic alterations. Somatic mutations can generate cancer-specific neoepitopes that are recognized by autologous T-cells as foreign and constitute ideal cancer vaccine targets. Every tumor has its own unique composition of mutations, with only a small fraction shared between patients. Technological advances in genomics, data science, and cancer immunotherapy now enable the rapid mapping of the mutations within a genome, rational selection of vaccine targets, and on-demand production of a therapy customized to a patient's individual tumor. Customizing a patient-specific cancer vaccine includes several processes. Firstly, patient tumor biopsies and healthy tissue, such as peripheral blood white blood cells, are subjected to next-generation sequencing. By comparing the sequences obtained from tumor and normal DNA, tumor-specific non-synonymous single nucleotide variations or short indels in protein coding genes are identified. A computational pipeline is used to examine the mutant peptide regions for binding to the patient's HLA alleles and other features of the mutated protein deemed relevant for prioritization of potential vaccine targets. These data can facilitate the selection of multiple mutations to design unique neoepitope vaccines that are manufactured under GMP conditions. 
neoantigens are encoded by genes containing non-synonymous mutations in tumor cells, which result in unique amino acid changes with the potential to be targeted by the immune system. Neoantigens are perceived to be key to unique and personalized cancer vaccines. In the past, the comprehensive and fast identification of neoantigens along with progress into the field of research was limited by technologies. Today, advancements in the field of high-throughput screening, including whole genome and whole exome sequencing, are contributing to the identification of neoantigens closing the gap between theory and practice. These pipelines include the sequencing and comparison of healthy and cancer tissues to identify tumor-specific non-synonymous mutations. A basic neoantigen vaccine pipeline can be divided into six processes, including sample collection, whole exome and transcriptome sequencing, selection of transcribed sequences, HLA typing, neoantigen validation, and neoantigen vaccine formulation. This slide revealed the list of selected key clinical trials of personalized neoantigen-based cancer vaccines, including their phase status, tumor type, vaccine formulation, and key contributions. Despite decades of research and development, only a few cancer vaccines have been approved for human use, and several other vaccines are in various phases of the clinical trial. The success of these cancer vaccines depends on several factors, including the type of antigens used, the tumor microenvironment, the immune landscape of the tumor, and the different vaccine formulations. Approved preventative cancer vaccines are all targeting viral antigens, protecting patients from cancers caused by HBV and HPV. Two therapeutic vaccines have been approved. Among them, Cipusil-T is a dendritic cell-based vaccine, which uses autologous dendritic cells to stimulate cellular immune responses mediated by T-cells against prostatic acid phosphatase in castration-resistant prostate cancer patients. Creative Biolabs has been effectively supporting the cancer vaccine industry for several decades, and our unique array of satisfactory services has been proven by our clients. To get the safest and most effective cancer vaccines to obtain market approval, our comprehensive scientific, technical, and regulatory experts are dedicated to providing vaccine developers with the right expertise and solutions in the early development stage. We will accommodate the specific properties and clinical purpose of your vaccine candidate and take careful scientific considerations to ensure the most appropriate solutions to develop your projects. Here are our one-stop cancer vaccine discovery and development solutions for you. If your interested study is not included, don't worry, you can always contact us directly and our scientists will help develop a customized solution. For more details regarding Creative Biolabs cancer vaccine solutions and other immunotherapy development services and products, please visit our website or contact us directly.